What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Today I want to talk about battery banks. We're going to kick off a new video series on battery banks, how to properly size them, what kind of batteries to choose, all that kind of stuff. So today we're going to talk about how to calculate the size of battery bank that you need. Now before we start, if you find this video helpful and you've uh, watched some of my other videos and you want to subscribe, please do so in the bottom right hand corner. When we're talking battery banks, we're talking off-grid solar panel systems where you're relying upon the batteries to provide power when the sun isn't shining. So it's very important that we get this calculation right or you'll be stuck without power. First thing that we need to know is we need to know how much total electricity you're going to consume every single day. Now on this calculation, be as specific as you possibly can. Uh, you can use past historical information if you have it available. But otherwise, we need to really think about how long each day you're going to use each individual load. You also need to know the exact electricity consumed by that load. Now, there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can use the manufacturer's information. You can use online um, kind of estimates for that particular device. Or the best case scenario is you use a power meter like you see in this picture to determine what your load actually uses in the real world. So as an example, let's say that you want to move off grid and live in a yurt or live in a cabin. Um, I got this idea from one of my subscribers named Drew. He lives in Dallas where I live and he emailed me and asked me some questions about this particular scenario. So let's say that you want to go live in a yurt in the middle of nowhere and you have to rely upon your solar panels for power. So for the first load, we have a chest freezer. And before anyone says anything about freezers and refrigerators not running for 24 hours, I fully understand that. What I did was I got the yearly kilowatt hour consumption and translated it back to an average per hour. So an average chest freezer of about this size will use 20 watts on average every single hour of the day. So that's 480 watt hours in the typical day. Next, we have a mini fridge, and again, same scenario. I got the kilowatt hours it consumes in a year, back that down to an hourly uh, amount, an hourly watts, and then multiply that by 24 hours, and we get 658 watt hours in a day. So we also want to run a, some entertainment and some electronic uh, devices. So we got a typical laptop here, um, uses 65 watts when it's running. Um, we're going to use it three hours a day, so 195 watt hours. And it's fairly insignificant, but you got to have a phone and you got to charge it every night. So I use this. This is an iPhone 6, um, uses about 10 watt hours a day for charging. So uh, we'll use that information for this calculation. And last but not least, we want to watch a little bit of TV. We want to be a little civilized out here in our yurt. Um, so we got a LCD TV. Um, or LED or whatever it is, but typically even the smaller ones are going to be in the 80 to 100 watts. So let's say 100 watts and we watch two hours of TV a day, so 200 watt hours. So if we add all that up, we got a grand total of 1,543 watt hours consumed per day. Next, you need to decide how many days of backup power you want to store in these batteries. Now, this is going to be a personal preference for the most part, but uh, there's going to be a few factors that go into that decision. First thing to think about is the weather in your area. Unfortunately, some areas are better for solar than others. Some places have lots of overcast days, and unfortunately, on an overcast day or, or even a partially cloudy day, your panels are not going to perform to their full capability. So let's say for this example, we use three days of reserve power. Now, my personal opinion would be don't ever choose less than two, but there may be some circumstances where you want extra days. Maybe you live in Seattle or somewhere there's lots of uh, overcast days. You may want to choose more than two or three. Now that we've decided how much reserve power we need, we need to multiply the number of days that we decided upon by the number of watt hours we've already calculated for our daily consumption. 3 days times 1,543 watt hours equals 4,629 watt hours. And finally, we're going to convert the watt hours we just calculated to amp hours by using Ohm's law. So 4,629 watt hours divided by the voltage of our battery bank, which we're going to use 12 volts, equals 385.75 amp hours of total capacity for our battery bank. Actually, I lied. Sorry, guys. That's it's not that simple. That number that we arrived at 
is how much power we need in a day. That's true. However, because of the way that batteries work, and especially lead-acid batteries if you're going to go that route, you can't discharge any battery that I know of past 50% without harming the health of the battery. So we need to take that 50% discharge into account. We're going to get into this a little bit further in, a few, in some future videos, but this is where you're going to want to think about the longevity of your battery bank system. If you choose to discharge your batteries to 50% um, on a regular basis, they're not going to last as long. If you size your battery bank to uh, only discharge your batteries to say 25%, they're going to last you a whole lot longer. So keep that in mind and look for a future video on that in, uh, sometime down the line. So to get rid of that 50%, we need to double it. So 385.75 amp hours times two equals a grand total of 771.5 amp hours. And that's the true number that we need, uh, the total amp hour capacity of our battery bank for our needs in this particular situation. All right, that wraps up this video. Look for more battery bank related videos to come in the future in this series. If you've liked what you've seen today, please hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.